Hi, I'm Neil Redfern. I'm the Principal Inspector of Ancient Monuments for Historic England in Yorkshire. I'm really lucky. In my job, I get to go to lots of castles, lots of historic sites, um, but one that absolutely is really close to my heart is Pontefract Castle. It's important for me for two reasons. The people I've met, the people who love this place as well, the people of Pontefract, they're really fantastic. But also it's the story of this place. It's just how captivating it is. And it is an extraordinary story. On this particular site, we were looking to actually improve access into the castle through the main gatehouse. They were going to build a retaining wall to actually facilitate that access uh, and unfortunately halfway through building the foundations for that um, they found some startling new remains which are the things that actually sit behind me now and what we've come to realize uh, we think we've found is an entire new frontage to the gatehouse that actually survives I don't know uh, before in my life where we've excavated the entrance to a castle of this importance in this country. Well, I want everyone to be able to share in that excitement. You know, this is about open archaeology. This is archaeology for everybody. And it's about people defining their place and what it means to them. What we're wanting to do over the next five weeks is explore some of the questions that these remains have thrown up for us. I'm Chris Caswell and I'm the Head of Fieldwork for Dig Ventures. We're hoping to find more evidence for the gatehouse, in particular where the drawbridge would have been. We think we've got part of a drawbridge pit, but we'll need to excavate down to see if it is what we think it is, what date it is, and how it ties into the history of the castle. It's a fantastic opportunity, not just in terms of the archaeology, but in terms of the community and getting people involved, particularly locals, so they get an opportunity to come here, really get hands-on with the archaeology and experience it for themselves. So we've been here for a week now already. Uh, we've made great progress, although we're still in the Victorian period. They built footpaths all over, they grew flowers, licorice, um, and really made it their own. Uh, in doing that, they've covered up an awful lot of the earlier ruins, and we just can't wait to get down through this Victorian layer and see what lies beneath. My name's Ian Sanderson. I'm County Archaeologist for West Yorkshire. I've worked in West Yorkshire for 25 years. We've never excavated on a scheduled site of this nature before, and it's fantastic to see archaeology of this importance and and this quality appearing and the opportunity for the community to take part it's fantastic and I think it's a really good 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 project. I'm Abby. When I was younger I wanted to be an archaeologist and then I went down another route. I didn't know you could actually do archaeology days until I started to look for it. So I just thought it was really nice that we could have a go even though we had no experience. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm working here as a volunteer. It's not every day you get a chance to work at your local castle and it's just an excellent opportunity to find out what's happening in a place like this that I know reasonably well. Yeah, it's great fun and it, it helps out the archaeologists but we, we learn a lot as well. This is week four and what is absolutely fantastic is the progress that has been made. Um, so we really are now in what we think is a drawbridge pit. Four weeks ago when we actually started um, there was uh, only the very top stones of the drawbridge pit visible and we're now well down below two meters in depth. These walls behind us hold a really fascinating little secret and that is mason's marks. Now the masons when they would build a structure like this in the medieval period were paid on piecework by the number of stones they effectively put in place or dressed. So to be able to count how much work was done, they would dress some of the stones with their own specific personal mark. Every other stone seems to have a mason's mark on. We've got over a dozen unique marks, some of which have been recorded from other parts of the castle, but quite a lot of them are completely new, so we've not seen them anywhere else before. 
Now, why is that important today? Well, two things are, uh, stand out to me. Firstly, I love to be able to identify the individual when we're actually digging. So this is a human person that has left their mark on what can be seen as a really big building. But also what's fascinating is those mason's marks being unique help us date this structure because we know where other mason's marks around other parts of the castle are. So we can actually tell when this piece of the castle was built at the same time as another part of the castle because certain masons were working on both sections and that's really fascinating that really helps us tie this castle back together so what was an enigma about when was it built why was it built starts to unravel itself with these fantastic connections across the rest of the site coming to the end of the dig now. We've been here for a month. It's not just the archaeology that's been exciting, it's been really exciting to be able to involve members of the local community. We've had teams of people working on site helping us to dig down deeper into the history of Pontefract Castle Gatehouse. We've nicely cleaned up most of the trench, the walls are looking great but we've still got one job left to do and that's get to the bottom of the drawbridge pit. We've worked our way through the 17th century rubble, she's likely to have been deposited after the English Civil War and we're into the medieval now but how deep that goes we're going to find out. So it's really great to be here um, at Pontefract Castle today. I've, I've not been here for nearly um, nine months. In that time, so much has changed. The whole COVID-19 crisis has changed how we work, how we think about places. When I last saw it, we'd excavated about half of it and I just never imagined the stone walls, the dress stone walls, would continue going down to the depth that we've actually seen them. So to see Chris and his team hand digging it using a hand winch, not dissimilar to what would have been there when they actually made it, is absolutely amazing. We've not seen the bottom of this drawbridge pit probably since about 100 years after its construction. That's when it started silting up and started being hidden from view. You know, we've just got these kind of small parts of the curtain wall, a bit of the gatehouse tower left now. There's not actually really any substantial upstanding remains left. So it's been great to show them what's down here. And most people just can't believe how old this is. We think it's 600 years old, but it looks like it was built just yesterday. As well as getting to the bottom of the drawbridge pit, which is obviously what we we really wanted to do. We've also had several other successes while we've been out here. Notably that with the community and the amount of engagement that we've had as we go along. Now things have been a little bit different the last three weeks because of Covid, but before we managed to involve many, many members of the local community, it was great to see people come out and experience it and hopefully we'll be able to share more in the future. The concluding story about Pontefract Castle and, and my experience is actually trying to find and unlock what the key of the north actually means. That phrase was really reflective of the, the enormous power and influence the castle had over the north of England. You controlled Pontefract Castle, you controlled the keys, the access, the, effectively the ownership and management of the north of England. And I think what the drawbridge pit actually illustrates to me is it's the very keyhole to that story, that analogy. You control this drawbridge pit, the gate, you control the keyhole, the keys to Pontefract Castle. I think that's why they invested so much time and effort and resources to create such an impressive defensive structure. 
Pontefract Castle was always impressive, was always important. I think this gatehouse elevates it to an absolutely new level. This is a royal castle where power and prestige were the important factors, where the demonstration of that control comes through in this gatehouse. Previously, we just had a small set of steps and part of one gate tower. Now we can see this amazing drawbridge pit and what that actually means. It's been truly fascinating. And for me personally, uh, after 17 years of, of, of working here, of working with the, the locals, the volunteers, of working with Wakefield Council and their museums and library service, this is an amazing culmination of that time and that story. It is truly impressive and it's just been a privilege being able to see it. as town crier of Pontefract, as appointed by Pontefract Heritage Group, it gives me great pleasure to thank Dick Ventures for all their efforts during this visit. They have shown enthusiasm, dedication, professionalism, and not forgetting their good humor. I thank you. God save the Queen! <laughs>